Well, the Senzomiwa murder trial continues in the High Court in Pretoria this morning. Another cell phone analyst is expected to take to the stand, and the expert will testify on what he found on accused number two, Bonganin Tanzi, as well as accused number five, Fisogul Tlenduli's phones. Well, ENCA senior reporter Lindelo Masakani is outside the High Court for us, and she joins us live now uh, to give us more details about what is to be expected from court this morning. Slee, very warm good morning to you. That's precisely the question was expected from court. Well, of course, we're back here at the North Gauteng High Court where we are expecting the Senza Mewa murder trial to resume after it adjourned uh, briefly last week. And that, of course, was to allow the defense to go through uh, the analysis from another cell phone data expert that's going to be called to the witness stand that has analyzed data from two of the accused phones. That is accused number two, Bonganin Danzi, as well as accused number five, Fisogutin Duli. We also adjourned last week in the middle of the cross-examination of uh, Constable Sizwe Zungu, uh, who is currently um, on the witness stand as the state's witness, who alleges, of course, that uh, he uh, uh, identified and was with uh, those who are accused in the dock at a hostel uh, in Fosleris uh, on the night Senzo Miyua was shot and killed. Now, we know that cell phones were confiscated uh, from the accused and analyzed, uh, one of which um, belonging to uh, Mr. Fisobute Nduli, which is accused number five. Uh, the cell phone expert that we've already heard from uh, has already testified that uh, uh, the number that allegedly linked to Fisobute Nduli had made contact just days before the murder uh, with Singer as well well as the girlfriend of Senzo Miyua at the time, uh, Ms. Kelly Kumalo. So what we are expecting today is that that cross-examination um, of uh, Constable Silva Zungu will continue, but that we will also hear more analysis from the uh, uh, next cell phone data expert. No. And when it came to this witness, because he already testified and said he saw these accused. So he opened that door, he dropped that shield for the defense to actually now speak about his uh, choosing and not choosing when to produce evidence. And the, that, the judge sort of shut that door for the defense to actually take him on and to say, listen here, but we cannot trust you. And he was supposed to leave that to go so that he can actually see if this is a guy that's willing to go as far as incriminating himself, then it knows. Then you can say, this guy wasn't even afraid to incriminate himself to actually make sure the court is placed in the best position with the evidence. The judge showed that, shut that door with section 203 of the, which it gives that um, a, a, an acute, a person or a witness that protection. But once you've testified about something, we're supposed to leave the defense course with cross-examination. The rules is not that tight to allow them to actually cross-examine why he chose to report on the sense of my issues, but not on the nephew's other um, shooting of Sanaka. And for me, that was worrying what the judge did there. I don't want to speak about the, the judge manages his case, but also he must manage it both fairly for both parties. And when the state was doing things with these surprise witnesses, and even the second cell phone analyst that is, that is now on the 99th hour called in witness only given to the, to, the, to the defense on Monday, he's not chastising the state for their behavior. But when the defense just sort of steers in the wrong direction, he's quick to say to Mr. Amnisi, Mr. Ramasupili, Mr. Ngumalo, uh, Advocate Mshololo, is quickly to chastise them. Chastising must happen across the board. And that, for me, was one of the worrying things sitting as a legal practitioner, watching what is happening, and then you ask yourself, is these five accused really going to get justice? And, um, and it's said that we'll also now see that this might run down to a, a situation where people might say, we need to now ask this judge to recuse himself because of entering into the arena when it doesn't suit or need him. And Zungu's evidence, I don't trust that guy. I will not lie. I will not. People can say I'm biased, but I don't trust him. I don't trust his evidence. His evidence to me, even if it's premature, I say it should not have any bearing on this trial. Well, let's also talk about, uh, you know, I suppose the time that court will resume again, uh, Slee as well, and also knowing that this is a retrial, how much of an impact uh, this has been, not only the accused, but the entire case. 
Well, of course, we know that the trial itself is starting over de novo um, before Judge Rada Mokhateng, who has come out of retirement. And, of course, there's been mixed reactions in terms of how he's presiding over the trial. You've heard now uh, that soundbite from legal expert Mr. Alton Hart, uh, who's criticizing uh, the manner in which uh, the judge is perhaps uh, treating the state as well as the defense in terms of um, how they're conducting themselves in court. Okay. Uh, you know, there has been some applause for the judge in terms of the speed of this trial now uh, and how it's moving and that we're seeing a lot more evidence being heard before court. Uh, but of course, um, this trial is quite controversial and there will be mixed reactions uh, in terms of the witnesses that are called, the evidence that, that's we're, that we're hearing, uh, you know, and, and perhaps uh, how we're seeing uh, the treatment of the law lawyers for the defense uh, as well as the state by the judge. But we are, ex of course, expecting to resume uh, with court proceedings at 10 a.m. this morning. All right. Well, thank you so much, Lee, for this update. We'll be sure to uh, come back to you when there are other developments. Linda Lamasakani, Ian Cieza, a senior reporter, giving us this update on the Senzo Mewa murder trial.